What's going on guys, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how to make your own custom stickers, uh, scanning them in and using them in your artwork as an asset. Dread Labs. So I ordered some uh, stuff online and basically if you order anything online it comes with a sticker on packaging, um, I think for the postal office or whatever, um, they look like this. And uh, I just peeled them off and scanned them in the Photoshop. Um, I recommend scanning them in at 600 DPI to get as much details as possible. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to scan these in right now. Uh, I'm going to clean them up and show you how to do some graphics for them and use them in your uh, artworks. Okay, so we're here in Photoshop and I scanned all these files in. And as you can see, some of them uh, have a bit of a folded edge or are ripped off. But um, personally, I kind of like that. Um, it just gives off a more realistic feel, I guess. Um, so what you want to do is you're going to uh, duplicate by Command J and rasterize your uh, uh, stickers layer here. And uh, we're going to grab the clone stamp tool, which is here. Um, and if you don't know what the clone stamp tool does, it copies stuff uh, where you pick like an anchor point. So, for example, I'm hovering uh, with my mouse over this uh, QR code right now. Uh, if I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click, you can see that my uh, brush is basically painting where I just clicked. So I'm now painting the QR code somewhere else. Um, what we're going to use this for is we're going to grab an empty part of the sticker, like here. I'm going to draw over the graphics on there. And you can see that it's kind of copying stuff that was initially here. Um, so I recommend starting out with a rather small uh, part of your sticker. And keep pressing all the new places to expand your uh, white area, basically. And try to pick random points for your uh, anchor to be in so you get a more randomized uh, set of dust and dirt and speckles on your uh, sticker basically. Otherwise you're going to get some uh, stuff that looks a bit like it's a pattern uh, on the paper of the sticker and it kind of looks messy um, or not realistic basically. So I recommend doing it as, as random as possible. Um, and also avoid going over the edge here uh, as you can see otherwise you're going to expand the edge of the sticker which is uh, a bit uh, you don't want to do that um, so what you can do is you can uh, grab your uh, select a mask option here and try to select the sticker uh, so you can only paint on the sticker basically I'm going to do that right now um, and you can see that it's kind of, uh, the edges are kind of a little bit uh, imperfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shift edge a bit down so it takes a little bit in of the selection that I initially used. Uh, feather it a little bit, just a little bit, and click on OK. And now if I'm painting here, I'm not going over uh, the edge of the sticker. Um, so yeah, let me just... Um, Clone stamp the this whole sticker and we're going on to the next phase. Um, as you can kind of see right now, um, there's a bit of a dark, darker area on the sticker right here. And there's a bit of a lighter area on the sticker right here. This is just how it's scanned in, if you can see. Uh, this is because of the folds that you can kind of see right here. Um, I recommend either uh, just uh, clone stamping it all out, so you just have a one sticker um, where it's just one color. Um, but if you... Let me see if I have an example in here. If there's a folding on your sticker where you just, like for example on this sticker, you can't really uh, replicate that, I either recommend doing it with little, really small uh, clone stamp brushes uh, or um, just keep it the way it is because it's kind of hard to do it like that. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to just zoom in, take the darker part on 
like that's empty in here and just gonna s start all over again um, uh, with the darker areas of this sticker right here so um, we're back and as you can see I cleaned out the sticker here um, I'm just gonna leave the selection on for a little bit because I want to check if I actually masked it perfectly or not and well it kinda looks good already um, so if you use the selection on that uh, you can already see that the sticker is already kinda masked out and it doesn't look as um, unrealistic as I thought it would be uh, but what the problem that you can kinda get sometimes with um, uh, with the select the mask option in Photoshop is these kind of smaller holes in here like this black part in here that's not properly masked I feel like and yeah you can see if I use a white brush on it that it kind of disappears as well uh, let, let me just put the opacity on my brush on 100% and there uh, I can just fill in these holes that I think that aren't really uh, a part of the sticker here um, but yeah, besides that, that's that's actually uh, a decent, a decent uh, version of a sticker. Um, so the next step for this is uh, what I usually do when working and doing an artwork is getting the sticker, um, put it in the Illustrator, and do some graphics for it. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how I uh, do that right now. I'm gonna duplicate this sticker, uh, apply the mask to it, so I only have this sticker, and I'm gonna put copy. I'm gonna start up Illustrator real quick, and we're back in Illustrator, and I just pasted this uh, sticker in here. Um, and what I usually do is I try to rotate it in a way that it looks uh, like an actual rectangle, where the lines are properly lined up in horizontal and vertical options. Um, and I'm gonna draw a rectangle around it. I'm gonna lock the sticker first, and I'm gonna do a rectangle around the sticker here. Um, and put it in a stroke so I can properly see where the edges of my uh, sticker are and as you can see this is kinda how the sticker is lined up uh, and how it should look like um, and from now on I'm gonna use this rectangle as the outer edge of um, my sticker and I'm gonna do my graphic inside of here so I just pulled up uh, our Dread Shapes product that you can find on dreadlabs.net and I'm going to take one of these shapes, let's say this one. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into my other project here. Um, and I'm going to use this as the base for my sticker. So we're back. I just made a quick um, little mock-up of a sticker that I use. Um, if you uh, are interested in this uh, chain visual that I did right here, that's actually a 3D render that I vectorized. Um, more info on that soon. Um, and now we're going to show you uh, how to take this back into Photoshop. So what you want to do is uh, leave the outer shape that you use to uh, as a border of the sticker out of it and then group this uh, vector that you did copy it and bring it into Photoshop uh, and then I'll paste it as a smart object so we can always get into Illustrator later and edit it back into it where we want it to so now we're just gonna try and rotate this and resize it perfectly so it fits into the sticker box
this should do it. Okay, so now we have this shape in here and um, it kind of looks a little bit too perfect basically. So what I usually do to uh, make it a little bit less perfect is I'm going to filter the store displays. I'm going to use a displacement map that I got from Black Market. I'm going to link it in the description because it's really good. Um, you can get it by buying their trash machine uh, Photoshop action. Um, basically, um, so what this did is it kind of distorted uh, parts of the, the vector here, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit more blurry by um, adding a box blur to it. And to blend uh, our shape a bit more with the texture of the sticker, we're going to double click on the layer. And we're going to use a whole other option and grab this left part of this uh, slider right here and bring it in a bit. And as you can see, it blends in a lot already with, um, with our sticker. So I'm just going to leave it here. And now we have this sticker that we're going to use here. And, and then we're going to select both of these layers. Convert them to a smart object, call it sticker. And now we have this sticker and that we can use for our album covers. Uh, one thing that you might see is when uh, this artwork folds right here, you can see uh, obviously this print is not gonna go over the folding of this sticker. Uh, we're gonna use a clipping mask right here and then um, mask this part out of this, out of here. Um, just like that and then we're going to select both of these turn them into a smart object call it sticker hey guys sorry my computer crashed and um, I had to do the sticker and it's all over again luckily the rest of the file had been recovered uh, anyway um, I'm going to duplicate this to an existing artwork that I did for an upcoming uh, product on the Dreadlabs webshop uh, so I'll just press duplicate layer and here it is. So this is an um, this will be a vector pack that's out on um, and it's out on Dreadlabs pretty soon, and it's gonna feature some sick 3D renders of chains, as you can see right here. Um, it's also used here in um, in the sticker, of course. Um, what you wanna do if um, if you have your sticker loaded in on your uh, artwork, uh, I'm gonna. I always put a little bit of a drop shadow underneath. Uh, let's just reset this to default. Um, make the distance just a little bit bigger and the size just a little bit smaller, and then lower the opacity just a little bit, so you get that smooth like shadow here on the side and on the underneath here. Um, yeah, and here, well, there you have it. Um, this is how you pick a sticker that you have at home and instead of just throwing it away you can scan it in and use it for your artworks um, and this is basically like better for the environment as well as uh, doing something creative with the waste you have laying around in your house so I hope you learned something today and until next time